I just woke up to see that my Samsung Galaxy Watch 8 should arrive today. So we're doing some initial scientific and systematic testing of the heart rate tracking performance of this brand new watch from Samsung. And we'll be comparing it to the Samsung Galaxy Watch 7, so the previous generation. Now I have both the smaller version, so 40 millimeters and 44 millimeters right here. For the Samsung Galaxy Watch 8, I also ordered both sizes, but only the smaller one should arrive today. And to start with, I actually have to reconnect them to the different Galaxy phones I have, because each watch always has to be connected to a separate Samsung Galaxy phones. So I have three right here, and I actually have a bunch more. Let me show you and I have a few more galaxy phones right here as well so I'll be connecting at least two or three galaxy watches today and then when the galaxy watch ultra and classic arrive we'll be testing those as well but first I really need a coffee All right, my coffee is ready and I'm downloading all the updates on my phone so everything is ready for when the Watch 8 arrives. I'll make sure the Watch 7 is already properly connected to the other phone and then we'll start doing some testing. By the way, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. And talking about that, it's time to start my normal job so I'll be working from home today and maybe taking a half day off if the Watch 8 arrives in time and otherwise I'll see you tonight. Okay, even though I was home the whole day, I had to pick it up at the post station, but let's get to it. All right, I'm back home and it turns out I actually ordered a 44 millimeter version of the Galaxy Watch 8. I ordered both sizes, but the 44 millimeter version is the one that arrived, which is good in some way because I expect many of you will order the larger size, which is the one I'll be testing today. And then in the future, I'll also be testing the smaller size. That also means I have to set up the larger version of the Galaxy Watch 7. So let's set both of them up, do an indoor cycling session. Then if I have time, also a weightlifting session. Then I'm going for some drinks with a friend, but I have to cycle there. So we can also do a cycle test back and forth. And then when I'm back later tonight, we'll take a look at those cycling results. So let's get to it. So let's start by unboxing it. I don't expect there to be any major surprises, but let's find out. So here's the new Galaxy Watch. It actually looks quite good. I kind of like the design. Let's put the old Galaxy Watch 7 next to it. So here we have both side by side, the old Galaxy Watch 7 with the purely round design and here the new one with the sort of cushion design around it. I also bought this strap right here, this fabric band, which should make it fit my wrist a little bit better. So I'm quite excited about that. I will see if I can find a similar strap also for this watch right here to make the comparison more equal. If I cannot find it, I'll stick with this strap right here, so the more rubbery strap. I actually like the look of the black on black or gray on gray a little bit better. Usually these kind of fabric straps allow for better fits to the wrist, which also means a better heart rate tracking signal. Like I said, if I can find a similar strap for the Galaxy Watch 7, we'll use this one. And I'm gonna be wearing the Galaxy Watch 8 on my left wrist and the Galaxy Watch 7 on my right wrist. Okay, almost everything is set up. Here you can see the Galaxy Watch 7 and Galaxy Watch 8 side by side, the same size, but now with these sort of fabric straps. So I found one that fit the Galaxy Watch 7. Before you had a sort of more or less standard 20 millimeter strap. Normally it's 22, I think for many watches, but you would be able to find similar ones. Now you have this more proprietary snap-on strap, similar to what we saw for the Ultra before. It is easier to connect, so that's a plus, but it does mean third-party manufacturers will have to make specific straps for this watch. The only thing to do now is wait for the Galaxy Watch 7 right here to update, and also for Galaxy Wearable to update on the connected phone, and then we'll be ready for the workouts. Everything is updated and working, and I started indoor cycling. And as always, to test the heart rate tracking performance, we use the Polar H10 ECG chest strap as a reference. Chest straps are the most reliable way of measuring heart rate because they use the electrical activity of the heart as a signal instead of the blood flow on the wrist. So I'm gonna do my workout, then compare both the Galaxy Watch 8 and the Galaxy Watch 7 against the Polar H10. Then we'll do a quick weightlifting session. We'll look at both data. Then I'll take a short break, grab a drink, cycle back and forth, take a look at the cycling data, and that will be the very initial test. Then this weekend, I'll try to do a bit more of an extensive test, maybe release another review Monday or Tuesday, and then I'll do some long-term testing with all Galaxy watches. Okay, let's first speed up a bit.
Okay, that was a pretty intense session. The heart rate data looked pretty okay on the watch. There was sometimes a slight delay, but maybe that's fixed actually in post when I get the data out. So I'm gonna export the data, analyze it. But in the meantime, I'm already gonna do a weightlifting session. I'm gonna do back and biceps, and we're gonna look at both those data at the same time. Okay, all the workouts are done. I'm pretty exhausted, and now it's time to load all the data. Okay, I set up most of the analysis, but I still have to send over the Galaxy Watch 8 data. And for some reason, the email sharing actually doesn't work. So I have to use Bluetooth to send the data over to my computer and look at those download speeds. So now I can finally process the data and I'm really excited to see those results. So hopefully in a minute or so, we'll actually see those results and we'll discuss them together. And I actually had a quick peek at the results already and they're surprisingly good, especially for Galaxy Watches. So these are the results right here for the Galaxy Watch 8 with the heart rate as measured by the chest strap in blue green and the heart rate as measured by the Galaxy Watch 8 in red. And this is for indoor cycling or spinning. And the red line of the Galaxy Watch 8 mostly follows along very well with the reference. So there are a few moments of deviation right here where I had to take a short break. It didn't fully detect that dip in my heart rate. And also right here, it somehow had a delay in picking up on the decrease and didn't fully detect the peak. But what about the Galaxy Watch 7? Did this also improve with firmware updates? Well, potentially actually, it shows more or less the same results as the Galaxy Watch 8. It struggled in the same moments, though here it actually detected a peak in my heart rate, but otherwise, almost perfect agreement I would say. So for cycling indoors, this is a lot better than what we saw in the past, but we can actually calculate a correlation and then see how this compares to the competition. And here we have the correlations for indoor cycling with the heart rate as measured by the reference device along the horizontal axis, and that according to the Galaxy Watch 8 along the vertical axis. And the better the agreement to the reference device, the closer the points are to the blue line. Now we can definitely still see some deviation, so it wasn't completely perfect, but I would still say it's good enough with a correlation of 0.97. But what about the Galaxy Watch 7? Well, I would expect this to look the same based on the individual right we just looked at. And indeed the results for the Galaxy Watch 7 are more or less the same, maybe even a bit better, but I think they're basically within the error margin of what we'd expect. And there's a similar correlation at 0.97. So honestly, both of them are doing quite well, though definitely not perfect. Compared to the competition, this isn't bad. There are better devices, but there are definitely worse devices. And in the past, this has performed worse. I, of course, will do many more indoor cycling sessions to see if this was a fluke, if it just did better by chance. But let's quickly compare this to the competition. And here we have that overview with that correlation value along the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, the watch is ordered from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And the Galaxy Watch 8 is marked in red right here, and it's doing pretty okay. It's sort of in the second or third tier of devices, but in general, a correlation of 0.95 or so or higher for spinning is probably good enough. But let's zoom in a bit so we can actually read some of those labels. And that zoomed in view is displayed right here. So these are just the devices with a correlation of 0.9 or higher. And even amongst these somewhat better performing devices, the Galaxy Watch 8 is somewhere in the middle and definitely doing better than before. I'll get back to that in a second, but let's first take a look at where we can find the Galaxy Watch 7 retesting. And the Galaxy Watch 7 is basically roughly in the same spot because we know it had a similar correlation and it's actually doing a little bit better because the rounded value is 0.97, but it's actually quite close to 0.98 but they're both in this area right here, together with, for instance, the Amazfit T-Rex 3 or the Whoop MG1 on the biceps. Still, Apple Watches and the Pixel Watch are definitely doing better than the Galaxy Watch, but it's potentially getting closer. There might actually have been a firmware update which improved some of the things. Now again, I need to do more testing to say that with certainty, but this is at least a hopeful indication. But let's now quickly take a look at the results for weightlifting. And looking at the results for weightlifting right here for the Galaxy Watch 8 in red, they're still pretty terrible. Every time I did a set of exercises, my heart rate increased. So there are all these peaks in heart rate throughout my exercise session. And basically none of them were detected by the Galaxy Watch 8. And I suspect we'll see something similar for the Galaxy Watch 7. And indeed the results for the Galaxy Watch 7 right here look about as bad. Maybe one peak was detected right here. 
but it's really not any good. I'm not even going to take a look at any of the other plots because we can just see the Galaxy Watch can still not be used for weightlifting. But how do both of these actually compare to my previous testing of the Galaxy Watch 7? Well, let's take a look at that. And the way we will look at that is using these plots where the correlation is now along the vertical axis. So we want the device to be as far to the top as possible. And we have spinning on the left and weightlifting on the right where each dot is a different device and the Galaxy Watch 8 in this case is marked in red. So the higher a device, the better. And as you can see for spinning, the Galaxy Watch 8 is doing pretty well. It's pretty close to one and it's doing better than 62% of devices out there. But for weightlifting, it's still one of the worst devices out there. And if we now take a look at the Galaxy Watch 7, this has very similar results. So it does better than 71% of devices for spinning and it's one of the worst devices for weightlifting. But this is my retesting in 2025. How did the Galaxy Watch 7 and Galaxy Watch Ultra do in my previous testing? Well, quite a bit worse. This was the smaller version of the Galaxy Watch 7 I previously tested and the correlation for spinning was really a lot lower for weightlifting potentially a bit better though I probably also mixed in some other exercises that were a bit easier to measure. And if we take a look at the Galaxy Watch Ultra this performed very similarly for spinning right here. So potentially there's actually a software improvement now also on these older models. I do have to do a lot more testing to say that with certainty but I'm happy we can at least have some hope at the moment. Okay, those are some pretty exciting results, honestly. I didn't expect a lot of better results from the Galaxy Watch since previously it always did pretty poor in my testing. However, there might potentially have been a firmware update because also the Galaxy Watch 7 is doing a lot better. This is just an initial test, so it's hard to say. I need to do many more workouts. I prefer at least five for each type to make a more definitive conclusion, but this is what I can do in the short term. However, cycling outside will be a much bigger challenge because there's much more bumpiness. So I'll do two short rides, now one to the bar and one back from it. And then I'll quickly finish up this video, hopefully tonight still. The people in America will be lucky because you will get it in your early evening. And for those watching in Europe, I guess I'm wishing you a good morning. Okay, I'll now quickly take a shower and I'll see you after I had some drinks. All right, I'm back from the bar. I did two 20 minute bike rides or so, so going there and back. So let's analyze that data now and see if the Galaxy Watch 8 is any good at tracking my heart rate while cycling outside. And Samsung seems to be full of surprises today because this actually looks quite good. This is the overview for cycling outside for the Galaxy Watch 8 and the correlation here at 0.94 is actually really good at least compared to what we're used to for Galaxy Watches. There is some deviation away from the blue line but overall I'm happily surprised by this. But how did the Galaxy Watch 7 do? I didn't look at these results yet. Let's have a look. The Galaxy Watch 7 did more or less similar I would say. The correlation is a little bit lower at 0.91 but just looking at the plot, I would say they look more or less the same. So either now because of the warmer temperatures, the results are better or there was some firmware update and the results are just a lot better because the sensors are more or less the same in the new Galaxy Watch, the sensors a bit closer to the skin. So that might lead to a minor improvement. But these results are probably due to firmware updates. But let's quickly take a look at those individual rides and then compare them to the competition. And right here you can see the results for the Galaxy Watch 8, which is plotted in red and the reference device in blue-green. And overall this looks pretty decent. It's not perfect, but this would already be good enough for me. At least I think this would be good enough. And cycling back looks more or less the same. There are some deviations, but they're relatively minor. Let's now take a look at the Galaxy Watch 7. This is the way to the bar. And this right here is the way back from the bar. I would say it looks more or less the same. There's a bit more deviation right here. Maybe a bit more deviation here. Let's again compare this ride directly. So this is the exact same ride. I don't think there's a major difference. You're gonna get the same results with both Galaxy watches, but they are improved. And we can actually see that better by comparing these results to the competition. And that comparison to the competition is displayed in this OV right here where the Galaxy Watch 8 is marked in red right here and it's now one of the better devices out there and that's honestly really good. So let's zoom in a bit. So here in the zoomed in view, we can see that even amongst the better performing devices, so just those with a correlation of 0.9 or higher, the Galaxy Watch 8 is doing pretty well. It's also very close to the Galaxy Watch 7 right here, sorry, the name is partially cut off. 
it's not quite as good as the Pixel Watch and the Apple Watch again, so the main competitors are still doing better, but it's doing about the same as some Huawei devices, though a few Huawei devices are potentially still doing better. However, if this is a consistent pattern and we can get just as good results in my future testing, then I'm really happy with the improvements that Samsung has made. This is really a leap forward. Again, this is a very initial test, but this looks very promising. Okay, it's already way too late, honestly. It's quite a bit past midnight, but I wanted to get this video out before going to bed and we're almost done. But what are my final conclusions on the new Galaxy Watch 8 and potentially also the Galaxy Watch Classic and Ultra since they have the same sensor and probably the same firmware. But sticking to the Galaxy Watch 8, what's my conclusion? Well, it's promising. The results are a lot better than my previous testing. We only did a few exercises though per type of exercise. So we need to do more exercises to see if these results are consistent. But as a first indication, this is great. A big improvement compared to previous results. However, you don't need the new Galaxy Watch 8, it seems, for this improvement because the same improvement was found for my Galaxy Watch 7. So it's most likely a firmware improvement if there is any improvement. So that's my initial conclusion. Of course, I'll be doing more testing. If you want to support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that give you the best discount possible on different products, whether you want the best running app out there, the best bet for cooling and sleeping better at night, or maybe you just want to buy any device on Amazon, even if you decide to buy it. So if you decide to buy a Galaxy Watch, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, check the discount affiliate links below to get the best deal possible and at the same time support the channel. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Galaxy Watch 8, I think you might like this video on the Pixel Watch 3 or this video on the best sleep trackers out there. Thank you.